This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans, go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. It is June fifth, two thousand twenty-one. None of us expected to be here, not tonight at least. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Luke, what up? How's it going, man? Just got back from a little family dinner, so uh, all is well. I'm full. I'm ready to record, baby. Same, same. And we are joined by Kevin Tucker, content contributor for the Six Man Show, making his debut. We did not expect it was going to happen like this, but nonetheless, we got Kevin. Kevin, what's going on, man? How are you? Like you said, man, this is not how I expected to roll in, but let's do it. We got a lot to talk about. All right, folks. Things went really bad today. Some people are celebrating this. I'll, I, I am not happy about this. I don't think that this is a good thing that this happened today, at least not when in the way that it happened. Steve Clifford is out as the Orlando Magic head coach today, reported by Adrian Wojnarowski um, originally that the team and the coach decided to mutually part ways. Now, anytime you hear mutually part ways usually you kind of just feel like the coach got fired and they're doing this to kind of save him face but i'm out doing yard work we're like doing mulch and everything and i'm absolutely disgusting covered head to toe in dirt and my buddy cedric calls me he's like bro i'm so sorry about clifford I'm like what are you talking about man he's like steve clifford bro he's out i'm like no there's there's absolutely no way you're 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 trolling me luke knows cedric so this is something that cedric would just do, you know, on a, right. on a regular do Saturday. Mm. So I, ch- I pull my phone out and like, I don't know if you guys have ever worn basketball shorts, but if you have basketball shorts and you start to get all sweaty, like your phone can like feel right. your thigh, like through your pocket and start pressing buttons. So my phone was completely disabled for 10 minutes. <laughs> I run over, grab my wife's phone, go to Twitter. I'm refreshing like crazy. And sure enough. And then we're texting and this is just bad. Luke thoughts, initial thoughts, feelings. Um, I would say that like, I'm, I was surprised it happened. It's one of those things. It's like, you know, it can happen, but you're still surprised when it does. Like you're surprised that like, that's the direction that it went. Right. And you know, there's a lot of people who I guess props to them who said cliff won't be around. I don't think we'll be around. Jonathan and I sat here on the podcast, We, we called it blasphemy. We said we, it was ridiculous. We said it was ridiculous. We said he came in, he knew it was going to be somewhat of a project. And then, I guess he didn't want this much of a project um, where we feel like it's a retooling Clifford clearly felt, no, this is, this is a full rebuild. This team is not going to be someone I want to move forward with Kevin. What, uh, what, what were your thoughts kind of just initially to it all? Yeah. So going way back to the trade deadline, I actually had a thought about this Mm -hmm. because, you know, that trade deadline obviously changed the outlook of the magic, changing our, our top three scorers, some of the veterans, you know, and I thought, you know, we kind of had this trajectory. We thought Vooch was going to be our cornerstone. Um, and But it changed, obviously, like that, which is a huge change for Clifford. So I was like, I wonder if he's going to stick around. But what surprised me is the timing because we've been out of the season, you know, what, three weeks? You know, I, I would have thought if this was in the back of Clifford's mind or maybe it wasn't, like you said, Jonathan, maybe it was something more of, on the team's mind that maybe we, we would have done this a few weeks ago. So the timing really surprised me. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting next few weeks for sure. So the piece that Josh Robbins released today uh, through The Athletic, just the way that he described the situation between Clifford and the front office was after the season, everyone's like, hey, let's take a few weeks off. Let's cool off and then like let's kind of come back to this and regroup. And then when the sides came back together, Clifford, it basically sounds like this wasn't something that he wanted to be a part of moving forward. So I want to ask you guys about this because this is how I'm feeling now. Jeff Weltman, John Hammond come in, and Alex Martins is like, hey, ownership really wants to make the playoffs. The first year, they evaluate Frank Vogel. They don't think he's the guy that's going to get this team to the playoffs. They bring in Steve Clifford with that goal in mind, saying this is going to be the guy that's going to get us to the playoffs. He just did this in Charlotte. Year one, he does that. Year two, turns around and does it again. And now year three, obviously bitten by the injury bug, make all these trades. And now all of a sudden, the goals don't really line up. Steve Clifford is still fighting for the playoffs. He's going to do his best to win games. But it's obvious by the moves that the front office made that that's not the priority right now. So I think 
this was all set in motion really by ownership. I feel like if the goals were different at the time that John and Jeff were hired, maybe Steve Clifford isn't the guy at that time. But lo and behold, we have him. But I think the thing that I'm really having the hardest time with is just the second out of the last three coaches that we've had that he's really the guy that wanted to leave. He's really the guy that wanted to move on. Now, he didn't try to quit in the middle of this season like Scott Skiles. But now we're talking about our seventh coach that we're going to hire in the last nine, ten seasons, going back to Stan Van Gundy, Jacques Vaughn, Rob Borrego, Scott Skiles, Frank Vogel, Clifford. And now it, it just keeps going and going. Like, when is it going to stop? I don't think it's a good look for the franchise. That's really where a lot of my shock is coming from. And that was really the main reason that I thought he wasn't going to go anywhere just for the sake of stability in the, the franchise. How are you guys feeling about this? Do you guys feel like this is the good move? Are you guys upset about this? Are you guys happy about it? A lot of people are happy about this. Yeah, I, I think uh, it, well, the really key term is that mutual agreement thing. You know, how true is that? Because like you said, if it is true, that means that Clifford really did want out. And that I'm with you, man, that reflects somewhat poorly on the organization because here we are, we've got this revolving door of coaches. Um, but as far as the, the future goes, you know, cause that's really what we're all about, right? We know we're not going to win the championship next year, but then this next coach has to be the guy that takes our young guys to the next level so that we can build for a championship in the future. You know, it all depends on who that guy is. And obviously we don't know that today. We won't know that for a while, but you know, only time will tell if this is, this is a good move or not. Yeah, I think kind of where I'm at, I, I talked to someone today who currently works in the NBA um, in some capacity. Um, and so, you know, in talking with him, he said a line that I really agree with. And it's something that like I'm it, it kind of just set off a bunch of red flags in my mind. And when you think about it and like Jonathan alluded to as well, and um, he said inconsistency with the infrastructure, which it affects the player overall product, which are the players. These guys don't know permanence. They they don't they don't see a coach walk through the door and think this person is going to be here for years to come. Mm -hmm. And this is my coach. I'm going to get buddy buddy with them. Like at some point you think like they know that these these coaches are, are leaving on their own accord. They know that they just said like, hey, I'm, I'm ready to get out from from Skiles to this. Players know about it. Play, people talk. Like, I really do think that like when a, when a, when someone wants out, it really does uh, affect the franchise and it's never a good look, right? You'd rather be the one firing somebody than someone leaving because they're not happy with how things are ran. And when it happens two times out of what the last three coaches, what do you, what are you to think who, who's the problem here? And, and what, why does this keep happening? Yeah. And also, you know, it's, it's not like Steve Clifford has been a bum or been a bad coach. He's done exactly what he was asked to do, what he was hired to do. He's got us to the playoffs twice this past year, bit by injuries, but he's so well-respected, you know, well-respected by players, well-respected by coaches around the league. So to have a guy like that, potentially, according to this, choose to step away, that hurts. That hurts pretty bad. A lot of people I'm seeing today are pointing the finger again at Alex Martins, just because you know, basically since he's taken control of the team, like things have just like went straight down really, really quickly. Like not long after he kind of came to power as the CEO of the magic. I don't know that it's fair to blame this on him, but at the same time, you just kind of have to add it to his resume. Like this has happened under his watch. You know, he made the hire of Jeff and John and, you know, they made the, the decision to go away from Frank Vogel to Steve Clifford. And now here we are, you know, the third year now he's wants out. And to me, it's you should have had this conversation before the hire saying, look, this is what we're going to try to do. We're new to this franchise. But if things don't work out, we're going to have to pivot. And would you be willing to trans, you know, from trying to make the playoffs to all of a sudden focusing more on player development and bringing young guys along? Like to me, it's, it's just kind of, you know, lack of foresight that this was a possibility. I mean, Fans have been calling for this for years. What happened this season with the with the roster? So how did the front office not know that that was a possibility that down the road there was a really good chance that they were just going to pivot the direction of the franchise and not make sure that your head coach is on board with that prior to making that hire? Now, we can all say that they did what was best for the franchise in the middle of the season, and I don't think you let 
a coach, at least not a coach like Steve Clifford. Now he's a good coach, but he's not a Phil Jackson or, you know, a Popovich or anything like that. You don't let your coach hold your franchise hostage. It's your front office. You're going to, you know, make the moves that you want to move. But it's just really shocking that I, I, I really don't even have words because I just, I was not expecting this when we woke up today. I wanted to ask you guys, because we're talking about, Luke, you brought up, you know, your, your contact in the NBA that was talking about how the turnover, like the revolving door, the lack of consistency can affect players and the product on the floor. Someone tweeted today, this is going to be Wendell Carter's fifth head coach in four years. A lot of us thought the issue with Aaron Gordon was it was Jacques Vaughn, then it was James Borrego, then it was Scott Skiles, then it was Frank Vogel, then it was Clifford. You know, he had five head coaches in his first six seasons in the league. That's not good for a player's development. Like you don't get settled. Like Frank Vogel tried to convince him that he was Paul George, you know, much to the detriment of Aaron Gordon, but guys like Wendell Carter, Jonathan Isaac, this is going to be Jonathan Isaac's third head coach since, you know, in four years that he's been with the magic. What's your outlook, Kevin, on, you know, how this is going to affect the roster. I think it can be a good thing for a lot of the young players, but some of these guys that have been in the league for a few years, they just haven't really had that continuity with a coaching staff. Yeah, I think if there's any kind of silver, I 100% agree with you. If there's any kind of silver lining, it's that our roster now uh, compared to the beginning of last year is totally different. There's a lot of guys that haven't had the same revolving door experience here with the Magic that other guys have had. You know, if Vooch and Aaron and Evan were still here, they would have been a part of that that revolving door that we just talked about uh, over the whole stretch. But, you know, a lot of guys, you know, RJ Hampton is new, Cole Anthony new, Wendell Carter now he, like you said, has had his own revolving door, you know, between coaches in Chicago. But uh, silver lining is some of these guys, they haven't had that experience. So this is going to be a chance for a new face um, without some of that baggage. But but you're right. Some of the other guys like Jonathan Isaac, like you said, uh, you know, that's that's got to be at least someone on the back of his mind. You know, here we go again, starting over. Um, but at the same time, last thought on this is that um, it's going to give all these young guys, and you know, we got a lot of potential position battles, you know, especially at the guard position. It's going to give them even more of a sense of uh, that they got to prove themselves again, right? Because Clifford already had, you know, his own thoughts and opinions on the guys coaching him for the couple of years for some of them. But whoever comes in now, fresh face, fresh outlook, a lot of guys got to prove themselves again. Luke, what about you? How do you feel? Is this going to affect the young guys, or are we going to be okay here? Well, the thing I fear the most is that it's already affected them, right? Like, you can't have that many coaches in this many years and it not already affect you. It's not enough that, that Markel, you know, has an injury history, that J.I. has an injury history. Like, these dudes already have their own demons to fight, and you're just bringing in dudes just left and right. Like, hey, here's your new coach. And they're like, I hope he be gone in two years. What does it matter anyway? He's going to want out. Why? Like, at what point do the players just stop trusting the front office? At what point, not only the players, but do the players' agents step in and say, hey, you know what? Why don't we try to get you out of the situation into one where they, they have a longevity in their coach and they have a good front office? They're winning soon. They can develop you better. Like, at what point does that come into play and we start hitting the panic button because this is a revolving door. I mean, that, that's all this is. And it's, it feels like it might be all it's ever going to be, which is dramatic to say, but why am I to think different? I really hope. And I think we can probably all agree that chasing after free agents wasn't probably part of the plan this summer. It just doesn't really line up with the timeline because who's going to look at this franchise and be like, they just blew up their entire team. They're going to be terrible. They just fired their head coach. They're going to have their seventh head coach in nine, 10 seasons. Why would you want to go there unless the Magic are going to go out and start overpaying guys, which really the whole point of what happened at the trade deadline was to move on, acquire assets and open up future cap flexibility. It's a good thing that we're not chasing after free agents this summer because it just wouldn't happen like whatsoever. Another thing that I wanted to ask you guys. So regardless of how we feel about whether it was mutual or, or Steve Clifford, you know, wanted to move on. Like, I think we can all agree that, a coach, there's only 30 jobs in the NBA. There's no guarantee that Steve Clifford is going to go somewhere else and get another head coaching job. So regardless of, of that, because that just sucks, we're, we're just going to throw that off to the side that he wanted out. But him leaving, do we think that 
this is a good thing potentially for the franchise. A lot of people have questioned whether or not he can be a good developmental coach. I, I wanted Clifford at least another year, maybe two, if they were going to sign him to an extension. I wanted Clifford because he, regardless of all the you know faults and flaws that he has as a head coach, he's going to hold the young guys accountable. So, Luke, do you feel like moving on from Clifford, regardless of the circumstances, is good for the team? Yeah, I mean, you tweeted out something today, Jonathan, um, basically saying, like, if you don't want to be here, we don't want you here. Peace, right? Peace. And and that that's it. I mean, Cliff didn't want to be here. He and, and You don't get to break up with me. <laughs> I break up with you. Right. But but that I think this falls under the category of like both things can be like this can be good for both parties involved. Cliff didn't want to, to do what he probably felt is a full rebuild with a bunch of young guys who need development. I mean, Jonathan, we talk about it on the podcast every week. We, we have so many guys that need developed and cliff probably just said, you know what? There's enough. What ifs for me? I'm out. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't have a sure star anymore. You took away Vucevic from me. Like I, I don't have a guy that can really lead these guys. Terrence Ross is great, but I don't know that he's a veteran presence that is needed in the locker room. Um, I mean, you, you hope you can find that in other guys. Um, I, I don't think it's Dwayne Bacon. Um, I don't like just because per, the cons outweigh the pros there. So so yeah, I, I think it's a good it's a good departure for both for both parties. It it sucks, but I mean that's it, it that's what it is. It sucks. Yeah, I think uh, I think a couple things really important here. First off, it just from speaking from my seat, I do want to at least voice some appreciation to Clifford. You know, yeah. because he did his job. In like yeah. like you said, Jonathan, he was hired to get us in the postseason. We had that long postseason drought, and then we knocked it out of the park. You know, we ended up one of the playoffs two years in a row. Uh, that was some joy that we hadn't felt in a long time. So super grateful for that. I will say one other thing about him. It was kind of sentimental. I was kind of a little bit sad today because when we hired Clifford, you know, he had this, this history with the magic, right. Being assistant yep. on, on those amazing, you know, Van Gunda, Van Gundy, Dwight era mm-hmm. uh, years. And I was like, you know, maybe he's the one, maybe he's the one to resurrect us and eventually take us to the promised land and continue with his magic story. So I was, I was kind of bummed today, honestly, guys, you know, I, it's not the, the ending that I imagined, but, uh, but as far as the future, yeah, I, I totally agree. And I like you, you hit it on the head, Luke, I really think it could have been a mutual thing, you know, yeah. um, just not lining up. And uh, yeah, I, I hope we just bring in a guy that can, can take our young guys to the next level. So it, uh, these next few weeks are going to be something else. Well, and, and I wanted to say, Kevin, you brought up a good point. I can't actually, I can't remember if it was Jonathan or Kevin. So whatever. Um, one Y'all have good said, ideas. Yeah. You, you just both are just full of so much, so many good ideas. No, one of you um, said today about this. Um, this is such a, a weird time. Like we're, we're to the point, we don't even know what draft pick we're going to get. And, and I, I, I now that's coming to me. I think it was Kevin who said this. Imagine the magic don't hire a coach and then get the seventh pick in the draft by or even the sixth and some terrible turn of events on lottery night and then the head coach who would have been happy to come in and coach a guy like Kate or Jalen Green or Mobley is now thinking I don't want to deal with a team that's got a seventh pick uh I I just don't want to you know I don't want to deal with that so um I'm out like I'm not I'm not interested in this job anymore so um I think it was you Kevin so if you would I mean I'd love to hear you kind of talk about that that whole situation and kind of the ways it can play out and, and what the magic maybe should do in your opinion on when they should hire a coach. What I'm, what I'm hearing is we have 17 days to hire a head coach. Right. Exactly. Which is great. Right. Which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That that was my thinking Luke was uh, you know, there's a few, few different doors that they can take. Right. Door number one is we hire a guy before the draft lottery, which Mm -hmm. is not a lot of time. Um, Door number two is that we wait for the draft lottery, see what pick we get. Because there's two sides of that coin, right? Like you said, uh, the well, the positive side is let's say we get a top three pick or a number one pick. What coach, what free agent coach would not want to come coach Cade? You know, especially the, all, you think of all the guards that are you know former guards yeah. that are current coaches. All of them will want to coach Cade. You know, if we get number right. one or even number two and get Jalen, that that is a huge selling point. But the flip side of that coin is if you wait and like you said, and, and we we have a tragedy that night and end up with the seventh pick or something like that that changes the game entirely. So I, I, I don't know what they're going to do. Like the timing is just crazy. I, I, just, I just have no idea. I, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of 
you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place because it's like, it is a big risk. You know, if you're wait if you're willing to wait until after the draft lottery, but if you're going to hire, if you're going to conduct your head coaching search in, you know, basically 15, basically two weeks. Okay. You want that guy on board, you know, prior to the lottery, you better make sure that you get that pick right. Because if you don't, and that ends up blowing up in your face, then people are going to look at you like you're Dude. like, you're, you know, don't know what you're doing. I mean, if you rush to hire the wrong guy and then, you know, a couple of years from now, we're just right back at square one, then looking for our possibly eighth head coach in, you know, 11, 12 years, it's just going to be kind of like this vicious cycle. But one thing that you said, Kevin, that, you know, you were kind of sad today about, you know, the decision with Clifford and everything like that, going back to your point about, you know, he was on the Van Gundy you know, staff and all of that kind of good stuff. When he would talk to the guys about, you know, if you, if you guys put a good product on the floor, like this building, this city is really going to wrap its arms around you and get behind this team. And you're going to have a great home crowd. And we did see that in the later half of the 18, 19 season. And, you know, right up until, you know, COVID, like the city was starting to get behind this team. And I think his voice having so much success in that franchise like his voice really carried a lot of weight because his always his thing was always this isn't you know what we're building towards winning in the playoffs everything that we're doing it's not necessarily just about winning regular season games but we're building good habits so that we're able to be successful in the playoffs so there was a part of me today that was sad to see that go out of the door because you know again it was kind of a a link back to you know some of the glory days uh with Steve Clifford so I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what the Magic do over the next couple of weeks. I mean, if you guys had to choose, which way would you go? Me personally, I think I would take my chances on lottery night, fully vet out this process, make sure that I'm hiring the right guy. If somebody doesn't want to be here over one player, over one draft pick, we're probably not going to be very good next year. I don't know necessarily if that's the guy that I want here. What about you, Kevin? Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'd, I'd probably wait as well you know there's a chance that maybe they've already uh got some guys in mind um and that's why this decision was made and we talk about mutual maybe maybe it is mutual maybe they had this idea because they've got a guy already in mind um another another thing and i'm sure we'll talk about potential candidates later but this this ties into it here is that there's one guy on the staff who has head coaching experience and that's ty corbin maybe they're thinking about just elevating him up Maybe they want a total change. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but as far as like lottery night and stuff, I'm probably with you. That'll give you a little bit more time. Um, but I'm sure they'll start the process ASAP. You know, I'm sure oh, they're yeah. starting that process right now. But as far as securing who the guy is, I don't know if it's going to happen before the lottery. Luke? Uh, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, you, you, you have to wait till the lottery. My other thinking is, it's this long shot, but if if the front office knew, I'm sure they knew that Cliff was just like not happy. Were they already kind of, you know, at least doing their research and due diligence looking into coaches? I mean, I know that they're, you know, they got scouts. They're looking into draft, you know, lottery stuff or, or draft stuff, um, all that. I just wonder if, you know, if there's guys that haven't had an NBA coaching job this year, head coaching job this year, and Kenny Atkinson being one of them. Um you know, you're telling me they weren't at least looking into him or, or interested in him. I mean, he's been on so many rumors to be an NBA head coach. Um, they've got to be looking around. So I think that like, yes, this would be a huge turnaround to get this done before lottery night. But if you know what you want, I mean, it's not, it's just, Hey, you interested in an interview? Yes. No, let's conduct this thing and let's see if there's chemistry. Let's see if you're interested, yada, yada. I mean, who's, who's to say that like, they haven't at least done that. I think that if they would have obviously like, been in contact in some capacity that it probably would have been reported in some way. I feel like that's a pretty big thing. Um, but I, I do think that they've already been thinking about it. I think that there's reason you know, why not? Because Cliff probably has been voicing his frustration with the front office privately since the trade deadline. So I don't think that like this caught anybody off guard in the organization. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, I think that it, while it could happen before lottery night, I think you roll the dice and you just take, you know, your coin flip of a chance of getting in the top four and hope that you're not scaring off any candidates. People that are like kind of celebrating this today, something crossed my mind earlier. Like sometimes 
like you, you don't know what you don't know. So like we knew what we had with Clifford, right? We knew that we had a, you know, a solid coach. He wasn't perfect by any means, but the, the next coaching hire very well could be a disaster and, you know, end up blowing up in our face and everything like that. And when we talk about this being, you know, at least somewhat mutual, I think it was probably Clifford, you know, came to the team and was like, look, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about stepping away. And for a lot of the reasons that we've discussed, you know, the, the roster, you know, continuity, stability in the franchise, maybe they weren't thrilled that he wanted to leave, but I don't think they probably weren't heartbroken either, especially when the, the goals and, you know, the direction of the organization changed in the middle of the season. So, but let's, let's get into some coaching candidates because everybody's going to be talking about that and wondering about that. There's one name that I'm hearing louder and more than anyone else. And that is former Orlando Magic point guard and Magic Hall of Famer Penny Hardaway. So before I share my opinion on this, because it has been somewhat polarizing today on Twitter, uh, Luke, what is your opinion um, on the Magic potentially hiring Penny Hardaway as the next head coach? Um, n- no. <laughs> no. W- why? Other than the fact that he donned the pen stripes and make a cool story? Guess what? We got that with Skiles. See ya. Uh, Clifford had history with the Magic. Brought him back. It's kind of nostalgic. See ya. Uh, Penny Hardaway, I mean, he is the epitome of nostalgia for Magic fans. You see a number one, you're thinking Penny or T-Mac. And Penny is just, it, it, it would bring up the warm and fuzzies. Or Jonathan Isaac, as Kevin Tucker points right, to baby. number one. Um so yeah, and, and and Jonathan, I think I'm along the same lines you're thinking. So I don't just like don't want to take you know too much from what you're going to say as well. But um, he's not been incredible at Memphis. They made it to the NIT, which you know for people that don't watch college basketball, that's the not invited to March Madness tournament. Um, and so yeah, I, I just I don't I, I'm not interested in in Penny Hardaway as a coach. Maybe in a few years, if hopefully the magic darn looking for another coach in the next few years. But if Penny has had success and voices his interest in a head coaching job with the magic, then great. Um, but as of now, there's a lot more that's appealing to me on, you know, uh, uh, in terms of NBA free agent head coaches that, that aren't and might be assistants or haven't held a job. Um, yeah. There's just a lot better candidates to me than Penny Hardaway. And I just, I'm just not really interested in that right now. Yeah, for me, uh, when it comes to Penny, I love it. For an assistant. If he wants to come be an assistant, I think that'd be amazing. And I, and I get the idea. I get the idea and the nostalgia. It would be amazing to see him on the sideline. But, yeah, I'm with you. And it's not about Penny for me. It's about a rookie head coach in general. I don't right. think that is what this team needs. Well, um, and, 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 and a rookie head coach who hasn't, like been an assistant or right. whatever at the NBA level, because I'm fine with assistants. And I'll talk about that later too, because I have my eye on one or two, but yeah, no, I, I definitely would agree. Like someone who just isn't familiar with the NBA scene besides playing in it. Um, and, and we can get into other coaches that have, you know, benefited from being playing in the NBA and now our coaches when they were a rookie, like had no experience, but you know, we'll, we'll get into that later. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's where I stand with Penny is it's not about Penny to me. It's about, I, I, just, I just don't think a rookie NBA head coach is the right move right here. I think we need someone who uh, knows the league, knows how to coach has proven at some level. I'm not saying we need to have a guy who's got, you know, rings and stuff. There aren't a lot of those guys, but someone has proven uh, that he can take care of an NBA roster and bring wins. Um so, yeah, I, again, I love the nostalgia. I think having him, like I said, as an assistant, that would be amazing. Think about him as an assistant working with Markel and with RJ and with Cole and then Cade or Jalen, hopefully. That would be amazing. But as a head coach, not yet, man. Yeah, I totally get the the story, the excitement. Like if the Magic decide that, you know, they, that Penny Hardaway is the right guy and they're, you know, that's who they're going to go with. I feel like the front office made the right decision in going from Frank Vogel to Steve Clifford. And unfortunately it didn't really work out, but I'm confident that they are going to make a good hire. So for whatever reason, I don't see it right now, but if they think that Penny Hardaway is the guy, then at least for a little bit, I'll believe that he's the guy and that press conference, I can assure you it would be a very exciting day to be an Orlando magic fan, you know, as Jeff Weltman would say, but when you just look at the, 
the level of experience that he has. I mean, he had a couple of years at East High School in Memphis, and then he's had two seasons at Memphis. Now, the first season, you can kind of give him a pass. You know, James Wiseman uh, might have played in one game if he even played in that season. He got uh, ruled ineligible by the NCAA, the NCAA. And then last year, you know, they played in the NIT. I just don't think he's shown enough success at any of those levels to constitute a team that is now, again, hate to keep repeating this, hiring its seventh head coach in nine seasons. You can't take that kind of risk. Not to mention the first time that Penny exited from Orlando, it was a tumultuous end. Like there were times that Penny was not sure if he was going to be a Orlando Magic Hall of Famer. He didn't know if that relationship was going to be mended. And some people would say this should be irrelevant. To me, it's not. I don't think it's worth the risk that if you hire him and it doesn't work out, then you go and you fracture that relationship all over again. And that would be tough for a lot of fans, myself included. I love Penny Hardaway. Like, usually I have a Penny Hardaway signed jersey hanging up right behind me here. Don't get it twisted. I love Penny, but I just don't believe that he's the right coach for the job. Now, somebody in the chat here is saying, you know, Skiles was an old man. Penny has won at every level so far. Guess what? Scott Skiles wasn't the right hire either. So we can't sit here and kind of pick and choose between Orlando Magic Legends. I just don't think that's the right thing to do. But um, I wish Penny all of the best. You know, I, I want him to be successful. And if that ends up happening, then I'm sure he'll get his chance at being an NBA head coach at one point or another. But I just don't think that this is the right time. So, And if I just may put you guys on the spot, would you be okay with him as an assistant, though? Like absolutely. Someone else comes in as a head coach? Absolutely. I would, assistant, right? I would be ecstatic if Penny was a, was an assistant coach for the magic. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of coaches that, I mean, guess what? Spoiler alert. Most of the time guys don't get their head coaching debut in the NBA unless they've been an assistant or had some experience in, in the film room or like whatever it might be. This isn't, it's not like, this is common sense. And this is just like facts that have been, that are backed up. Like dudes don't get looked at. Unless like don't get looked at super hard unless a a player is vouching for them and wants them to be their head coach or B um, has been in the NBA as a coach in some capacity um, with with a team. I mean, that, that, why wouldn't you want a guy that's been an assistant or a head coach and take it and run with it? Do that. Why are we want to take a long shot on a guy that like is just he Penny's a young younger like he's a he's a he's new on the scene he's fresh why would you want to bring him in to grow when he's supposed to be growing players like i just don't think that you need uh, i don't need to hear about like the potential of penny hardaway as a coach while i'm hearing about the potential of cole anthony and rj hampton like i just don't want to deal with that like it just feels like a lot yeah and and another thing for me is if you know, you do sometimes we see like stats side by side comparison. You get rid of the names. You know, if you get rid of the name Anthony Hardaway and look at his coaching resume, you go, that guy's not even close to the NBA right now. He's not even not even sniffing it. You may be an assistant job, maybe, but it's because of who he is. And I get it. Like, like we've all said, I get it. It'd be a dream scenario. Maybe one day he's the head coach of the Magic and leads us to a title, but I just don't see it right now. Yeah. For me, it's it's a great story, but you know, again, I'm just not willing to take the risk on, you know, anybody that's inexperienced. I don't care if it's Penny Hardaway. I don't care if it was Shaq. If Shaq wanted to come back and coach the Magic, I'd say absolutely not. No way. Obviously, that dude doesn't even watch the NBA except when he's on oh. separate TNT. He's still learning players' first names. Why would I want him as a <laughs> Okay, that's a, that's an actual fact. Now, Penny is a little bit, you know, right. further along in his coaching experience, but it's just the fact that Again, you know, like when we talk about Steve Nash, because that's like the hot topic right now. He's the last guy that got hired without really a, a ton of experience. That was handpicked by Kevin Durant. That was the guy that he wanted the coach. He was a player development coach with the Golden State Warriors. So he had at least some experience, you know, coaching in some capacity at the NBA level. But that's an I feel like we're hating on Penny. And that's like what really sucks about this, because it's driving such a wedge in Magic fans because people love Penny and if you say anything bad about Penny, like it just comes across very polarizing. And that's the part that sucks. Feels like we're crapping on him. We're not. This is just a really, really, really important hire. Like this just cannot go wrong. So enough to do with Penny. Let's talk some potential coaching candidates. So Luke, you mentioned that you have your eye on a few assistants across the league. Yeah. Who are you thinking and, and why? Um. So first one of them is Sam Cassell. Yes. Um, 
Sam Cassell is someone that I wouldn't mind at all being the head coach of the Magic. You look at him right now. I mean, he's currently an assistant with the Sixers. Uh, been there for uh, since 2020. But um, yeah, he's just been like with Doc Rivers for years now. I mean, guys, he's a guy who has had a history with developing guards. John Wall credits him for his development at Washington, saying Cassell helped him more than anybody develop to be the point guard that he became. You know, John Wall. I mean, I say what you want about John Wall now, but John Wall then, that was that's a baller. Like that's a dude that that is now. It looked at the reporters and said, Sam Cassell is the name that comes to mind when I think about my success and my development. Why, why wouldn't you want a guy like that? So he's one assistant, right? Um, and, and we can, you know, come back to these obviously and just talk about them in depth if we want, um, whoever you guys are interested in talking about another one. And people are going, I, I hate that this is the case, but anytime that I have said today, Becky Hammond to people, it didn't go well. People are like, it's a, it's a political statement. I, we, you, why would you do that? It's like, okay, if this was, if Becky Hammond was a guy and had been under Popovich for six years. And when Popovich stepped down or had to take off because he was sick and appointed her as the interim head coach for that night, what, where's the, like, why this discussion ends there? Like the, Becky Hammond is incredible. I mean, and, and she just is, she's she, talk about a winner. She's a winner. And she's been under Popovich, who is one of the most renowned coaches in league history. And there is a story I did want to share because I, I did a, a quick search of, of Becky Hammond today, doing my research, making sure I'm not saying anything that's out of line or that I'm not getting my facts right. There's a story about Becky Hammond that I read it. And I'm like, based on what I know about her as a coach in the NBA, I, I would love for her to be a coach for the Magic. Because, um, on, and it's not saying she's my top candidate because she's just not. Um, but she is someone that I wouldn't be mad about. There's a story about her in 2013 that was written by Howard Beck of Bleach Report in 2014. Um, say what you will about Howard Beck, but like this is just a story. He was reporting it. Um, and it's just about how when she was in the Florida Keys in 2012, um, <laughs> she told she was basically she was trying to get up and close and personal with the nurse shark. And she told her dad from the boat, hey, throw that chum in the water. So she had nope. chum, she had chum around her nurse shark comes up to her and she eventually like you know got out of there but the the point is like she is a self-proclaimed adrenaline junkie she's not scared of anything she wants to she at this point in 2013 she hadn't gone skydiving don't know what the update is there but she said i don't i, I don't even care to go skydiving because i love the idea of it i am scared to go skydiving but that's how i take care of my fears so like Becky Hammond has been breaking barriers since 2015, really, when she just stepped in and, and pop called her, she could have gotten a WNBA coaching job, but pop called her first and pop has gone on record to say, I know coaching when I see it, some people have it, some don't Becky Hammond is up there with the Steve Kerr's of the world in terms of they just have it. Becky Hammond has it. And, 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 and if you don't, if like, if you want to discredit her cause she's a woman, whatever, Popovich has vouched for her already. She's been there six years. She hasn't been let go. Like Popovich values winning. If he thought that she wasn't helping the cause, he would have let her go a long time ago. So when it comes to Becky Hammond, I mean, I think sometimes we get so caught up in like the trees, like oh, he, this guy's from the Popovich trees from the, or woman in this case, you know, Phil Jackson or whoever it is. And sometimes that can burn you. Like if we just look at what happened with Jacques Vaughn, like he was literally from the, the Popovich tree, mm -hmm. not can really comparing Jacques Vaughn to Becky Hammond. I think Jacques Vaughn has shown in his own right, you know, in, in Brooklyn last year that he's capable of, he, you know, being an NBA head coach in some capacity, but I don't think I would be upset at the Becky Hammond hire because I do think she's definitely somebody that could come in and just with her basketball knowledge could hold, you know, the presence that you need to have as an NBA head coach. Like you have to convince professional athletes that this is why we're doing what we're doing. You know, I heard a long time ago, the difference between coaching in college and the difference between coaching and professional uh, is college. You tell them what they're doing professionals. You have to explain to them why they're doing what they're doing. You don't just get to bark at them, but I like the idea for a Becky Hammond hire. Um, I like the idea of Sam Cassell. Uh, a lot of people, obviously Portland trailblazers just, mutually parted ways with Terry Stotts. 
that was something that I think was a long time coming. They just never really got to the the peak other than making a Western Conference Finals a couple of years ago. I don't know that I'm super crazy about that hire. Um, another name that we already talked about on this podcast, Kenny Atkinson, a couple yeah. of years ago when he was let go from Brooklyn, people are like, what are you doing? He's been doing a great job in Brooklyn, helped coach D'Angelo Russell to become an all-star. So that's a, a, another name that we have. But Kevin, what about you? Who, who do you think, you know, the assistants or candidates out there, who's kind of your favorite right now? It's super early. We're going to hear so many more reports. There are going to be names that we're not thinking of right now that we're going to hear in the coming weeks. But Kevin, just early on, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, uh, don't want to beat a dead horse, but Sam Cassell, the first guy that I think of, he's at the top of my list right now for some of the exact same reasons that you mentioned. Um, and I, I know Luke would be really excited to have another Florida State legend on, on the team here. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> Sam Cassell though, I mean, he's, he's proven it at, mm-hmm. at multiple stops, right? Like said, so Washington, the Clippers now with the Sixers, he's got the experience. He is a guard or was a guard, which is huge for the future of this team, because, uh, you know, we all, we all know the stable of young guards that we have and are probably adding to that, uh, here in the next few weeks. Uh, I will say, um, one name that has been circling for every head coaching opening right now that I do not want. I don't want Jason Kidd. Mm -hmm. I know he's a guard hall of famer legend, but his time in Milwaukee was a disaster when he was head coach in Milwaukee. And, you know, maybe he's learned some things along the way, you know, coaching under Frank Vogel in Los Angeles, but I keep hearing that name and, Oh man, I would, I would be really, really disappointed if, if that was the way we went, but I love the idea of Becky Hammond couple other ideas. Um, uh, I know this is kind of a weird one. This is kind of a weird one, but someone mentioned it today was Jerry Stackhouse. Now, Jerry Stackhouse uh, had some time uh, with the Raptors and was there apparently at the same time as John Hammond. Um, and so uh, that's a potential one. He's, he's with Vanderbilt now and Vanderbilt's terrible, but I don't think that's all Jerry Stackhouse's fault. But uh, that was another one that I heard. Um, so a lot of different options. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would be so on board with Sam Cassell, though. Um, one other name that I'll throw in there that is just kind of a long shot, not because we wouldn't want him, but because he might not want us, uh, is, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, it's or Messina. Um, oh yeah. Who, who has, who was with the Spurs and is now in Italy and kills it. I mean, like he's an incredible coach and it's very much like he's gotten so many head coaching offers, um, since he departed and went back to Italy. Uh, but he keeps declining them. Like he just doesn't want to do it um, and has a good track record. He was also, you know, like I said, he was with the Spurs. Um, so, yeah, I, I I mean, that's another name. Yeah. Someone else I just thought about as well. When you talk about getting offers, I mentioned earlier, Ty Corbin, assistant coach for the Magic, former coach of the Utah Jazz. Um, you know, so he's got coaching experience. And you just said offers. It reminded me, if you remember uh, Pat Delaney, Mm. uh he he was he at least interviewed for the Knicks job or you know earlier last year I guess it was and so I think head coaching might be on his radar as well um but again it really depends on the front office do they want some level of continuity you know keeping at least someone on the staff as the the new head guy or do they want to go a totally different direction yeah Kevin you mentioned that uh Jeff Weltman during his presser today mentioned the fact that all the assistants are still on staff now whether or not that's going to change, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with who the next head coach is going to be. And yeah, there's probably a chance that he might want to keep one or two veterans when you talk about guys, you know, like Ty Corbin, like Pat Delaney. Now it's up to them whether they want to stay on and be part of that guy's staff or if Steve Clifford gets another job, are they going to want to potentially go with him? But a couple of other names that have been thrown around and actually just in the, the chat is Juwan Howard, uh, right now, you know, longtime assistant head coach with the Miami Heat. Now he's the head coach at Michigan. And then Stan Heath, who just won the G League championship with the Lakeland Magic. But now he, months ago, like two months ago, just accepted a job at his um, alum, uh, Eastern oh, Michigan. Yeah. So it, are either of those guys going to want to leave like their place? Now that they have those jobs after, I mean, Stan Heath, after two months, is he going to leave? Or, you know, Jawan Howard, just after, you know, a season or two. Um, another name is Chauncey Billups. Chauncey Billups has been talked about, I remember a few years back, uh, was a, a candidate after David Griffin left the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was a candidate to become 
the Cavs GM and uh, you know, he's got a little bit of head coaching experience, but it feels like every time there's a, a coaching vacancy, the last couple of years, Chauncey Billups, name is at least kicked around like Brad Stevens promoted to the president of basketball operation with the Celtics. Chauncey Billups was like one of the first names that came up there. Now back to Jason Kidd, early reports are that Damian Lillard, I don't know how true it is, but it said that that's the guy that I want. If that's the guy that you want, please go get him because I'm right there with you. I think the the move, you know, where he's coaching and he's holding a cup of water, they're out of timeouts and he's like, yo, hit me so he can drop this water and get an extra timeout that way. It's absolutely genius. I love that. But again, you know, both of his stints with the Nets, with the Bucks, really didn't go all that well. So I wouldn't be super excited uh, about that, that hire. So, I mean, again, the next couple of weeks, we're going to hear tons of names, names that we haven't thought of or we haven't mentioned on this podcast. Hopefully this head coaching search doesn't go too quickly, but uh, I wanted to get into some fan questions here. Uh, you know, we put this out there. So let's see. Luke asks, why is Luke the most handsome host? Okay, I'm going to skip over <laughs> that one. Very good. Uh, would the new coach be named before the NBA draft? I feel like we kind of talked on that a little bit. Thoughts on Daryl Armstrong, assistant coach with the Dallas Mavericks. What do you guys think of that? That uh, is a name that I would not be mad at, again, mm. because he has coaching experience in the NBA. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't, I haven't, I, to be honest, I haven't given thought to Daryl Armstrong. I, I haven't, and maybe shame on me, I guess, but I, I haven't um, really done my research. Um, maybe, I mean, give him an interview, I guess, grant him that just being, you know, someone that Magic fans love, I guess, grant him an interview, see how it goes. But um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't know that he would be top of my list. You just like haven't heard his name at all. And sometimes that doesn't mean great things. Um, so yeah, I don't know, Kevin, what about you? Yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that name today, but wow. Yeah. I mean, that would be, that'd be a cool story. And also, I mean, talk about, uh, experience as an assistant. He's been with Dallas forever. Like probably yeah, Rick Carlisle, one of the best, you know, most tenured coaches in the league. Definitely yeah. not going to have you on a staff if you're not helping the Mavericks. Right. Especially not for over a decade. If I remember again, I haven't looked into this either look, but if I remember, right, I think he was on the staff that won that the Mavericks won in 2011. So I think he's been over there over 10 years, uh, which like exactly like you said, if he's been on Rick Carlisle, Carlisle staff for a decade, that says a lot. I, th I think that, that definitely give him an interview, put it that way, put him in the ring. And I think that'd be awesome. So there's a few other guys like, you know, Dan Tony is, you know, still out there as an assistant. Um, Ryan Brock in the Twitter chat here said, if the Bucks lose to the Nets, Budenholzer may become available, you know, that they've struggled, you know, later in the, the postseason rounds. So this just goes to show you, we've, we've mentioned like nine or 10 names in the last 15 minutes on this podcast. So it uh, really seems wide open right now. Yeah. Daryl Armstrong, by the way, Oh nine was when he started with, with them 12 so, years. Yeah. That's no Long joke, time. man. That's Rick Car Carlisle tree. I mean, come on now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, give him an interview. See, see how he does. I mean, uh, why not? You know, looking at that. Um, I, I know we're doing fan questions right now, Jonathan, but I did want to actually just keep going. And if we, if it isn't covered in fan questions, I'll come back around to it. No, please do. I'm, I'm searching through right now to find another good one. What did you have? I, I saw one today that has been, you know, the name that has been bounced around a lot. Um, I've seen today, at least someone on Twitter replies said, um, you know, can you talk about Kenny Atkinson and why he might be a good candidate for the magic? Um, and I do, I, Kenny Atkinson, I mean, I was going to come back around to it, but that's my leading candidate in terms of who I want. Um, Kenny Atkinson, you talk about player development. I mean, what he did with the Nets inheriting them when they were what an 18 or 21 team the year before he got there. And within two years, they were in the playoffs. Um, and he developed, I mean, he single-handedly, like along with the staff, obviously, um, developed guys like Spencer Denwitty. D'Angelo Russell uh, really came to, you know, that's where he really took off. Um, Joe Harris, um, Karis LeVert. I mean, like they've, Jared Allen, like they, he has a record of developing guys. Like guys have done well under him, uh, playing under him. And I, I really would like you know, Atkinson. And with one quick search, you can kind of obviously see like pros cons list of certain candidates, right? Um, his cons, uh, they, the Nets blew a lot of leads, like late game coaching just like, wasn't great. Um, but also, uh, you know, so in, in terms of that, like that's his con that's, that's really it. 
Um, and he, but he developed all those guys. I mean, you do, like I said, we talk about here every week, how many guys need to be developed with the magic. Kenny Atkinson could do that. I mean, there's a reason he was linked to the Knicks last year too, because they have young guys, right? You know, the, the guys like RJ Barrett, you know, and then Emmanuel quickly would get drafted and all those guys, like they had a lot of guys that needed developed and Kenny Atkinson could have helped there. Obviously the Knicks are not mad about, you know, making Tom Thibodeau their head coach after, you know, being the, the four seed this year, but Kenny Atkinson is someone you at least should look at. And I think every team is probably going to look at him, but I, I think you need to throw your hat in the ring with Kenny Atkinson. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. I think he'd be, he'd be an excellent, excellent addition. And also, uh, the Clippers, you know, we'll, we'll see that their season might be done here this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. And then maybe they can have an interview on Monday after game seven tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but uh, see, uh, for those who don't know, Atkinson is an assistant on the Clippers right now. Right. But uh, but yeah, totally agree. Well, his tracker with young guys is, is proven. Um, the big question mark for him, in my mind, is does he want to start at square one with the team right. again? When he's as already done even, that. Before. Exactly. Yeah, going he's already through got another... that star, right? Right. Yeah, yeah you're exactly right. Yeah, so. Resume. Yeah, that's that's the big question mark for me. But yeah, I'd love I'd love to have him. Well, the only coach that really has been tied to the Magic at all so far has been Terry Stotts. Uh, before we go ahead and sign off here, just what do you guys feel about Terry Stotts? Because I don't feel like that's the move. Yeah, uh, for me, it, it doesn't feel like an upgrade. I think Terry Stotts is a good coach. You know, he's proven that. You know, been at Portland what eight years now, and they've been in the playoffs. Maybe, maybe it's more than eight years, but been in the playoffs for most of those eight years, right? Um, He's got experience coaching some great talent, got talented guys. And, you know, using Damian Lillard as an example, if Damian Lillard did not enjoy working with Terry Stotts, Terry Stotts wouldn't have been there this long. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you know, he's one of those superstars that, you know, he can tell the front office, hey, this is not the guy, and he would have been gone, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some respect there. Uh, but, but yeah, for me, it, it, it feels like a lateral move from, from yeah. Clifford. Um, well, would it be bad? No. But I think I think there's someone out there who, who might I, be better. I think – I think all after doing some research on Stotts today, all I needed to see was the Blazers defensive ratings when he's been there. The Magic have such good defensive God, talent. And if you're going to ruin it with drop coverages and giving up the most threes in the NBA, I don't I don't want to be a part of it. Um, and just here's a quick list here for, um, you know, the defensive ratings uh, since LaMarcus Aldridge left in July uh, of 2015. Uh, the next year, 19th, then 22nd. Uh, they had a great year in 2017-18, um, sixth, uh, but then 2018-19, 16th, 2019-20, 20, 27th, 2021, uh, 29th. So I'm good. I don't I don't want Stotts. I, I think that they could have maybe done more with a better coach um, in the postseason than was done with Dame and CJ. Um, so do the Blazers, apparently. That's yes. why they fired him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I'm not interested in Stotts. Obviously, I think it's just like part of the recency of him getting let go is like that comes to everybody's mind. But you don't right. think about the Atkinsons maybe that that have been without a head coaching job for, you know, coming on two seasons. You know, you don't think about Sam Cassell as an assistant. You just think about the guy that just got let go as an NBA head coach. And you don't always want to be going there like right. that soon after he gets, you know, let go. Yeah, and that that's another thing. Uh, you know, think about a coach like Kenny Atkinson or any of these potential head coaches. Uh, there's a, there are these now a handful of openings now. What is it? Three now openings in the league: Portland, us, and Boston. And might um, and there's some rumors that uh, Indiana might also be a vacant right, yes. job. Which some people, Josh Robbins wrote that that might have something to do with Clifford's decision to want out of the Magic in case you know that job becomes available. So, right. Although I will say with Clifford, I don't think he's going to get this job. But how much would the New Englander? Steve Clifford want to head, be the head oh, coach of the Boston I, I heard that also. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that would be – I know he'd – I'm sure he'd love that. But all that to say, you know, if you're looking at the pecking order – hate to do this to Magic fans, but if you're looking at the pecking order of job openings right now, while the future is probably the brightest in Orlando, the win now option, we're at the bottom of the list. You think Boston is probably up there at the top in Portland and maybe if Indiana opens up. So it just it – just, it's got to be the right guy. It's got to be a guy who's ready to, you know – yeah. Uh, dig his heels in and be in it for the long haul and, and build yeah. his team. And and there is one name that I want to float out there just to get see your initial reactions that I haven't heard talked about really. Um, and <laughs> the name, you know it. Oh, boy. Known SVG. No, 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 no. Okay, because no. some people think that he might get fired after one season in New Orleans. But Well, also people are floating JVG too. So no. Okay, we, we just got rid of Steve Clifford. You're <laughs> bringing in JVG. You got <laughs> Steve Clifford so, again. So the name that I'm that I, I'm not even 
sold on this at all, nor do I think he would come. Um, high powered offenses in the past, D'Antoni thoughts. I mentioned D'Antoni. I don't, I, I don't think the personnel matches uh, yeah. with D'Antoni right now. Um, if we were a little bit further along and if we had a guy like Kate or like Jalen, you know, who can be, you know, really dominant on the ball and, you know, ISO score and can, you know, move the offense and everything maybe, but right now I don't see a lot of mutual interest there. Yeah. And the other thing is Dan Tony's office offense is built on a lot of threes. And I don't, I don't know if we want our guys no. shooting a lot of threes right now, <laughs> not the way we're currently constructed. I think my biggest concern moving on from Clifford is, is there going to be a defensive drop off because it's kind of how we've built the roster so far to this point, you know, defensive wings, you know, versatility, being able to guard multiple positions. If we bring in a guy that's like, eh, don't worry about that side of the ball. We're just going to score. That's going to be a recipe for disaster for the magic. But Sam Cassell, I feel like the last five or six years, you know, every other summer, it's like, when is Sam Cassell going to get his opportunity? So I think that's, are we like in a consensus? That's like the early favorite Sam Cassell. Uh, a yeah, favorite th- amongst like possible our, our favorite, our favorites. favorite. Um, I think Kenny Atkinson is my favorite, um, but uh, Sam Cassell is number two, I think. Yeah. One a one B for me. I think, uh, both of those guys uh, would, would be great. Um, yeah. It's, it's just so, it's so hard because I'm sure there are guys we're not even thinking of or guys that we don't even know are available. Um, right. It's, it's going to be very interesting, but going back to the openings that are out there right now, you know, it, it makes me wonder if the magic are going to try and, you know, hop on this super fast, get their guy and trying to beat out the other, other teams that are, that are currently open. I just don't know. It's going to be interesting. I think um, whoever they bring in, it's going to have to be like a long-term deal. Like you're not going to see any like, two or three year deals. Like it's going to be a four year deal at the least, just given the lack of stability that we've had, you're going to want to give that guy coming in some security. Um, my question, uh, last one to float to you guys regarding player person players, um, with cliff gone, does this someone, someone asked this, they said, don't know if I'm too late to, to submit a question, but is Cl- cliff getting fired? Surely means no more bacon question mark. Bacon and Michael Carter Williams are like they're shook scared. right now. They're oh, scared yeah. right now for sure. Absolutely. Here's my thing with Bacon though. This next year he makes like 1.8 million. Yeah. Right. I mean, technically there are worse backup shooting guards on teams that you expect to be terrible anyways. Yes. Right. Or, or backup backup like third string. I'd be okay if he's third string at one point. Right. But yeah, Bacon's not going anywhere this year. If you if you're asking me, you know, MCW. And know. honestly. I, I want MCW to stay because I do feel like this team needs that kind of veteran with the chip on his shoulder who, you know, is a good locker room presence and can bring the younger guys along and, you know, is a, you know, defensive stalwart coming off the bench and everything. So I honestly hope, you know, you make a great point about bacon, but I do hope that MCW, you know, stays as well, but like their ears had to perk up a little bit today, I think. And I'll say maybe they're not gone from the team, but I have a feeling at least their playing time will probably probably take a hit for sure you think you think cliff called them last night like around 11 o'clock it's like hey you up i'm gone by the way sorry (laughs) those dudes are like just just, those guys he only calls those those he only called those two and they were the first person people to know how happy is mo today oh i mean it goes without has anyone benefited more from this mutual departure than mo baba i should have checked his instagram to see if he (laughs) threw any uh if he's dancing showing crazy anything, anything like that so, wow. all right, guys, we got anything else We're running about an hour here. Uh, it's been a tough day. Last thing I want to say, let's just run down the last 12 months. Jonathan Isaac tears his ACL. Mm. Then Aaron Gordon injures the hamstring. Michael Carter Williams injures the foot. You lose in the first round to the Bucks. Shortly thereafter, Markel Fultz tears his ACL. The entire team is injured at some point. You trade away Nikola Vucevic, Evan Fournier, Aaron Gordon, you don't know what's going to happen with the draft lottery. The last two months of the season absolutely sucked. Now we lose our head coach. Like all of this feels like it's lining up for us to get the number one pick. If it doesn't, there's no justice in this world. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. No, I, I think that uh, we think we deserve the number one pick. We do deserve the number one pick. <laughs> there's that's not an opinion. I'm not biased by saying that. Like, I think you would be hard pressed to find a tougher 12 stretch run, 12 month stretch for any franchise that's about as bad as it gets 
Yeah, it's been sad. Very sad. That's the word I'd use. But I'm hoping, man, I'm hoping in, you know, what, 17 days or whatever it is, gives us a little bit of a little bit of hope. We don't know exactly what we're doing for the draft lottery, but I will be in Orlando, whether it's at the Amway or, you know, another location to be named later. It sounds like the Magic are going to be putting some type of watch party together. So maybe, you know, if Magic fans want to get together before that, you know, somewhere, you know, downtown Orlando, and then we'll walk over to the Amway. That's another idea. But yeah, 17 days. I really hope that all this pays off and it makes it worth it. Because if we end up with like the sixth, seventh pick, down bad. Mm-hmm. Down oh, bad. Man, that's going to be tough. Anything else, guys? No. I think that's it. Not me. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you for checking in with us, listening to the emergency episode. We just, as soon as this happened, we were all just consensus, like emergency podcast tonight. We got to do this. Yep. But uh, for Kevin, Luke, this has been Jonathan. You guys are listening to the Six Man Show, and we will catch you guys next time. See you. Thanks for listening to the Six Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. Please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It would really help us out a lot. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Six Man Show and like us on Facebook. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!